Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Our beloved fathers, deacons, monks, nuns, and our beloved congregation, those who are with us here in this holy church of Marsham on Barsabai and St. Mary's Cathedral, and those who are watching us through live streaming, may the Almighty Jesus Christ of Nazareth, God revealed in the flesh, be with you, guide you, protect you, and deliver you from the snares of the enemy and from everything that is of evil origin and nature. May the Lord Jesus be glorified in his children. May the Lord Jesus be praised through his children and worshipped through his beloved children whom he has purchased with his own precious blood on Calvary on the cross over 2,000 years ago. The gospel of today is from the gospel according to St. Matthew and chapter 21 verses 23 to 46 which is the end of the chapter. So Matthew 21 verses 23 to 46. The Lord Jesus is giving us a message that is built on three different stages and each stage is made out of a dueto. Um, the Lord was preaching in the temple of King Solomon and then he was, he was approached by the priests and the Pharisees of his time and they said, by what authority are you talking and preaching in the temple and rebuking us? Who gave you that authority? The Lord replied with a very simple reply, but so effective it made them go absolutely blank. He said, I will ask you a question. John the Baptist, his baptism, where was it from, heaven or from earth, men? They started thinking, those priests, they thought they were gonna corner the Lord Jesus. It actually backfired and it cornered them. Because whoever tries, whoever tries to challenge Jesus Christ of Nazareth, must be put to shame, must be. So they thought for themselves for a moment and they said, if we are going to say John's baptism is from heaven, he will say to us, why didn't you believe in him or in his baptism? And if we say it is from men, from earth, people will crucify us. People will stone us to death because Everyone held John the Baptist in a very esteemed regard as the prophet of God. So the best answer from them and the safest one according to their minute piece of intellect, they came back with this genius answer, we don't know. And the Lord said, neither will I tell you where I receive my authority. I'm not obligated, I'm not obliged. And then the Lord said, this father had two sons. He came to the first one and he said, I want you to go and work in my field. I'm, I'm talking in simple English, right? Paraphrasing. I don't like complicating things. So he, he said, no, or the Aussie way, nah. I'm not going. He said to his dad, I'm not going. Afterwards, he felt bad and ended up going and working. He went to the other son. He said, I want you to work. He said, of course, but he never went. So he asked them again, which one out of the two sons did the will of his dad? They said, the one who said first no, and then, yes. And then the Lord came and he said, this man 
planted a vineyard. And then he surrounded that vineyard with a big fence. And then he put a wine press in that vineyard and he built a tower. And he came to his servants, to those workers, and he said, I am entrusting you with this vineyard. I want you to look after it. And when the time comes for fruits, I expect those fruits being given to me. So he sent his servants, said, go and bring me those fruits. When those workers saw the servants, they bashed them, they stoned them, and some they killed. He sent again and they did the same. So that owner of the vineyard decided finally to send his own son lest they see him and be embarrassed and ashamed. So he sent his son. When they saw the son, look at these evildoers. They said, well, here is the inheritor. How about we take him out and kill him so that this vineyard remains ours. And they did. They killed the son. Let me tell you this. I do not care what you believe in. I do not care what religious backgrounds you come from. And I'm speaking out of love, but I'm speaking like a sword. Sharper than a sword. Let me at, uh, show you, my dear friend. I will put my life on the line for what I'm saying. I will never blink twice. I will never rethink about this i will say it with 100 percent confidence there is only one god in heaven his name is jesus christ of nazareth period jesus christ is the real deal he did literally come over two thousand years ago to the land of israel he was born in bethlehem he was raised in nazareth he was crucified at the age of 33 and four months and he was buried. He rose from the dead on the third day as he promised. He went up to heaven and sat at the right hand of the Father. He is God revealed in the flesh, the creator of everyone and everything that is visible and invisible. He owns everything and everything is in the palm of his hand. His name is the living messiah his name is jesus christ of nazareth there is no other god i am saying it out of love but with a loud voice in the wilderness of this world because people are living in darkness without christ no one no one takes you to god except jesus let me make this clear and very clear no one takes you to God except Jesus Christ, period. For he is the way, the truth, and the life. No Buddha, no Muhammad, no Krishna, no Moses, no one. It is Jesus, the one and only. And if they think the Abrahamic faith unites them, then they are the sons of the snake. No one unites Jesus only. Jesus only. I'll never go back on this over my dead body. And by the way, Jesus has got nothing to do with Christians either. You can be called a Christian by name unless you come and have a true encounter with your Lord, your Christianity by name only will save you not. Jesus Christ is God. Please, let's be clear on this. Next time somebody asks you this question, what are you? If you say I am Catholic, if you say I am Orthodox, if you say I am Protestant,
These names do not save. Jesus is the one who saves. What does it benefit you being a Catholic and not knowing Christ? What does it benefit you of being an Orthodox and not knowing Christ? If you do not come into a true, a true encounter and relationship, personal one, built on a personal relationship, if you do not come into this realization and truth, you have no life in you. No life. So many people have been going to church all their life, yet nothing has changed in them. Why? Because they have been going to church for every reason bar Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I went to church because it's a Sunday and it's a duty I have to fulfill. I went to church because there was a wedding. I went to church because there was a baptism. I went to church because there was a feast of a saint. But why did you go to church, my dear friend? If you do not go to church for Jesus and Jesus only, then don't come. Don't come. You are at the wrong address for the wrong reason and for the wrong person. Even if that bishop is the best looking who is me in the world. Don't come for me. Like I had to rub that one in, hey? <sighs> Jesus wants your heart. I've been on the other side. I've seen him. And I've been on the other side and I've seen Satan. I thank God. I've seen both. So if anybody comes and talks nonsense, you can't say anything to someone who has been through both sides. So pack yourself up and find another job to be busy with. Don't waste my time. Don't waste my time. Men, so many people of the 21st century, when their spirit leaves the body, they will have the shock of their life. Because they will think whoever is going to come and greet them. No, no, no. You, only Jesus. No one else. Bye-bye. See you later. Now, you can accept this, you can reject this, you like it, you, do, you don't like it, it's yours, but I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> Believe me, I went, <laughs> the sweetheart was, was waiting. And that place, unless you have Jesus on your side, you can't enter it. It is so perfect, it's beyond any perfection. It is so holy, it's beyond any holiness. Unless Jesus is on your side, you can never enter such perfect kingdom and such holy kingdom. It is beyond, beyond description, beyond imagination, exactly as St. Paul described it. What did you see, St. Paul? And actually, St. Paul saw paradise, the third heaven. Nobody has seen the Father's house yet where Jesus has been dwelling there for over 2,000 years. If paradise blew St. Paul's mind away, then how much more the heavenly Jerusalem? What did you see, St. Paul, when you went to paradise? He said, I saw what no eye has seen. I've heard what no ear has heard or any thought that has come to your mind of the glory which God has prepared for those who love Him from the heart. So some people came to trip Jesus Christ into a, a difficult situation. <laughs> My goodness. And we're trying now as well. Let me tell you one thing.
John the Baptist, his baptism, is it from heaven or from earth? Dueto, heaven, earth. A father had two sons. One said yes, one said no. And then this person had a, he planted a vineyard. And then he sent his servants. But then he sent his son, son, servants, dueto. But opposite, contradictive. Heaven and earth, above and below. One said yes, one said no, contradictive. The son and the servant, contradictive. But then the Lord, at the end, he tied it all together. And he said, the stone which the builders rejected, that stone became the cornerstone. What is a cornerstone? A cornerstone, my beloved, is the one that connects two walls. So there is one wall coming this way and another wall goes that way. This corner connects this wall and this wall. This cornerstone, the Lord says, was rejected by the builders. Who is the cornerstone? Christ. Unbelievable. When they used to build the temple in the good old days, the builders would come, the cornerstone had to be perfect. Otherwise, they used to pick it. Any, any stone that is crooked, they would throw it. There was a pile of stones rejected by the builders. He said, what the builders rejected, that rejected stone became the cornerstone. You see, the cornerstone is Christ. He was rejected by his own people, the Israelite nation. A Jewish from the tribe of Judah. He came from the midst of his own people, a Jew. By birth, he was from the lineage of David. Bethlehem is his city. The, the city of David, King David, is Bethlehem. Beth al -Khem, or Beth al -Hem, or Beth Lachma, whichever way you want to pronounce it, the house of the bread. And Jesus Christ said, I am the living bread that descended from heaven. I was born in the house of bread for I am the living bread that came down from heaven. He who eats me shall live in me forever. He was rejected by his own people, crucified. They crucified the son thinking they will inherit the vineyard. But as Christians, when we reflect on the Old Testament and what took place in the Old Testament, we may come as Christians and say, look at the Jews, what they did to the Lord Jesus. That was very bad of them. But we're not realizing one thing. What the Jews did at the time, the Christians are doing exactly the same thing today. Nothing has changed. It's the same fallen human nature, corrupt. When Adam fell, the human nature became corrupt. All of us are Adam. Same thing. What made up the Israelite nation? Priests, scribes, Pharisees, the elites. These were the three main groups, priests, scribes, Pharisees. Priests burnt, they were offering all those offerings to God for the remission of sin. Scribes, the law writers, Pharisees, the, um, 
putting everything under the microscope and picking on the tiniest of tiniest of tiniest things. Pharisees, extremely literal. These three groups were the Israelite nation. To them, they were worshiping the true divine God. And every other nation were pagans worshiping false gods. When the true God came in the flesh, who crucified him? The very people who claimed to be worshiping the true divine God. They crucified the true divine God. And today, Christianity is made out of three groups. Catholics, Orthodox, Protestant. History is repeating itself. The church of the Old Testament is the church of the New Testament. Nothing has changed except one thing, technology. Catholics, Orthodox, Protestants claim to be Christians. And who is crucifying again Christ? The three groups. The three groups. Each one says, I am right. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Now, be, please be careful. I'm a, I'm a heretic, right? Be careful. According to some legends, and I'm talking both clergymen and laity, according to these geniuses, oh, the church I belong to, it's a heretical church because they are the way to Christ. The Catholics claim they are the only way to Christ. The Orthodox claim they are the only way to Christ. And the Protestant claim they are the only way to Christ. Sorry, man. I, I, I lost. Which way is it now? I lost the way. I know how to get from Fairfield to Liverpool. If any church claims that they are the only one who hold the whole truth, then they are lying. The truth is Christ. There is no one that can know and hold the entire truth. For Christ is God. In a nutshell, I'll just show you what Christians are doing to Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lords and the King of all Kings, in a nutshell. The whole dilemma of, of Christendom, the Christian world, the whole dilemma is what, the, what we call Christology. Christology, the study of Christ. In other words, who is Christ? See, People at his time saw a human being. They saw him as a human being. But this human being is not only a human being. God is dwelling in this human being. And if anyone, if anyone who believes in God, they claim they believe in God and say God cannot be a human, then I'll ask you this, my dear friend. Do you believe God is almighty? Do you believe God is capable of doing everything and anything? Because if you claim that you believe in God, yet come back and say, God cannot do everything, then he is no longer God, no longer almighty. He is either all or nothing. My question to you, do you believe that God can become a man, a human? Yes or no? If you say no, then you are not believing in God, period. You have limited God. You have limited God to his capabilities and powers and authorities. God can do every, anything and everything. As Christians, we do not claim this man is God. But we are claiming God became man. Man cannot be God, but God can be man. This is our belief. Because God is capable of doing anything and everything. And since this man is the crown 
of his creation, then why wouldn't he become a human? To our beloved Muslims, when you read in their book, they will tell you that God transfigured in a shrub, God transfigured in a rock. My question to you, my friend, if you can accept that God transfigured in a shrub, which one is more precious, the shrub or the human? Which one is more valuable? If God transfigured in a shrub, why then it's a crime for God to transfigure in a human who is the crown of all God's creations? The Christians see Satan. Ah, that was in Iraqi Assyrian. Ah. But in the in the Aussie way, ouch. Ach slash ouch. Satan is very, very sneaky, very, very deceptive. Man. He gets on the nerve sometimes. And I should add this. Very ugly. <laughs> I feel sorry for those who worship Satan. Like if you want to worship, at least worship someone good looking. Like worship Juliet, worship Romeo, worship Sargon, uh, the Assyrian guy with the big nose. Normally Assyrians have the tendency of having gorgeous noses like this one. Anyway, <laughs> Satan is very sneaky. So he came, Christianity flourished in the first centuries. By the fourth and onwards century, Satan entered. He entered from the start, but he wasn't winning because he, he brought martyrdom. Second and third century, martyrdom, the greatest saints came out of martyrdom. The Roman Empire started slaying Christians. Saint George, the prince of all saints, of all martyrs, is from the third century. So Satan saw by killing Christians, he is actually create, making saints going straight to heaven. So he said, this tactic is not working. I'm going to come back with a different tactic to send them all to hell. He came with this idea, let me mix all the Christians and smash them onto one another in the name of Christology. Who is Christ? The study of Christ. So now, the Catholics say, Christ is two natures, one person. Please pay attention. I want, I'll say it only once. The Catholics say, Christ is two natures, one person. Then you have the Orthodox of both branches, Eastern and Oriental Orthodoxy. Oriental Orthodoxy claim Christ is one nature, one person. Good the luck. And then the Eastern Orthodox claim that Christ is two natures, one prosipon. And my church, hello Habibi, my church believes Christ is two natures, two hypostases, in one person. Thank you for coming. You can go home now. This is the main, not every reason, but the main reason why Christians went against one another and started excommunicating one another because everyone claimed his Christology is the truth. Is biblical. Do you know how far they went? Since they did not, they did not acknowledge this particular church. Therefore, they will not acknowledge the priesthood. They will not acknowledge your baptism. They will not acknowledge your saints. They will not acknowledge anything to do with your church. So when you go to the other side, they will say, you need to be baptized. You need to be 
born again not Hilson be careful <laughs> uh, uh, a church that has no altar a church that has no body and blood of Christ and the truth it's not a church period I don't care how far how high you jump and how long you sing you need to receive Jesus Christ in the truth or there is no other way I'm not discriminating I'm not judging I'm not attacking I'm just stating truths one day you will realize this truth I can guarantee you the Lord will tell you this was my true body on the altar and my true blood he will say it himself no one else this I can guarantee you. so everybody claimed a different Christology and based on their belief they held on to that and they said either it's this way or you everyone else it's the highway and they started going against one another they divided the church which is the body of Christ and the Lord is suffering till this very day because we do not want to come back repent and unite and overcome this issue that has been going on for over 1600 years or about 1600 years um, yesterday actually I don't know I talked about something now there's another issue now the Holy Mother who is the love of my life the crown of my glory my sweetheart whom I adore and I die for she's my mom she's my mom and nobody talks about my mom in a wrong way you talk about me God bless you, you talk about my mom the wrong way I'll smack you unless you say she is the mother of God you're going to hell or you're not one of us more softly putting it you're not one of us and if you say she is the mother of Christ you're a heretic she has to be the mother of God otherwise you're a heretic this came from a Catholic person but he didn't realize in the 90s the Church of the East and the Catholic Church during the, the reign of John Paul II they had overcome this issue and John Paul II said that the mother of Christ is absolutely biblical and it's correct we have misunderstood you guys for centuries so you as a Catholic go back and uh, dig out the records and before you speak so your Pope accepted it so you want to be bigger than your Pope Look what the Christians are doing. We were stopped from going to a monastery because our dogma is not like their dogma. We should be uniting to face the evilness of this world. 
Like if I visit a monastery, what does that got to do with uh, theology? What has that got to do with Christology? What has that got to do with dogma and, and canon laws? I'm visiting a monastery. A monastery is open to everyone who wishes to visit. You could be an atheist, you could be a Muslim, you could be a Hindu, you could be a Jewish, you could be a, 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 a Buddhist. It is a monastery for God's sake. Anyone and everyone who wishes to visit that monastery, it is open. I'm not going there to sit with you and question your belief and your faith and your Christology and your theology, let alone your dogma. But it's an excuse. Because there is no other excuse, so this is an excuse. It's like how they said to the Lord Jesus, those Pharisees, the Lord healed a person on Saturday. They said, oh, oh, you're breaking the law, you're a blasphemer. How dare you heal a person who has been suffering for 12 years, suffering. How dare you heal this person on Saturday? Couldn't you heal them on Monday? Excuse me? Were you sick for 12 years? And I've been sick. If I'm sick, I want to be healed anytime, all, whatever time it is, whatever day it is. But the Lord said, it is not the Sabbath made for the Son of Man. It is not the Son of Man made for the Sabbath. It is the Sabbath made for the Son of Man. I am greater than the Sabbath, which is a literal day. I am the true Sabbath. I am the spiritual Sabbath because Shabbat means rest. Shabbat means being silent. That's what Shabbat means. Rest, tranquility, peace, calmness, quietness. All of that falls under Shabbat. How can God rest? When can God rest? When his children are sin free. It is not about work. It is about salvation. When his children are sin free, then God is resting. God rested only when his son, Jesus Christ, died on the cross. So Jesus is the true Sabbath. It's not a day, it's a person. This is the rest of God. When your sins and my sins are washed away by the Lamb of God, by His precious blood, then God will rest. Because when we are sin free, then we can enter His kingdom. A sinner cannot enter a pure, holy place. You need to be made holy, perfect. And that's where Jesus Christ is your perfection and your holiness. So Sabbath is not a day, it's a person called Jesus Christ of Nazareth. This is the rest of God, His Son. So they couldn't find any excuse to attack the Lord Jesus. They found this childish excuse, you healed on a Sabbath, therefore you are breaking the law, stone Him. What a joke. So now we can't go because my dogma is not like your dogma. In Arabic, it's close to dogma. You know what a dogma is? Button. That's an Iraqi accent, dogma. My button is not like your button. <laughs> you know what's funny? Like you believe that Jesus Christ is one nature, one person? This is the way to salvation. If you don't believe he's one nature, if you believe he's two nature and one person, you're in trouble. You know, the funniest thing of all, the church I belong to, they think that my church claims that Christ is two persons. Listen, come, I'll show you the church father's teachings. 
I show you the church father's books. I teach you. Christ is one person, how dare you? Well, like, if, if I as a Christian believe Christ is two persons, then what kind of a Christian am I? This is madness. Madness. Christ is one person. Christ is the person where divinity and humanity were united in him. Jesus Christ, Christ is perfect God, perfect man. This perfect God and perfect man from the moment of conception, he is always God and he is always man. His humanity and divinity were united in the womb of the Holy Mother Mary, the Virgin of all virgins. From the moment the Archangel Gabriel greeted the Holy Mother and he said, Hail Mary, full of grace. You are being overshadowed by the Most High God because the one who is born of you is the Son of the Most High God. From that moment, the second person in the Holy Trinity, who is the Logos in John 1 1, who is God Himself, because John 1 1 says, In the beginning was the Logos, and the Logos was with God, and the Logos was God. So, this Logos, who is God, came into the womb of the Holy Mother, took upon Himself the human nature, became perfect God, perfect man. This perfect God and perfect man was and is and will always be together, always without no separation, not even a blink of an eye. He is always God from the moment of conception and always perfect man forever and ever and ever and ever and ever, never ending. So get on with your lives and enough playing like little children. I don't have the time. Mother of God, Mother of Christ. Christians are re-crucifying Christ, playing like little kids in the street. Let me put it to you in a very simple, simple term, even though it, it's not illustrating the fullness, but it's very clear and easy to comprehend. Let's say this mother, her name is Joanne, and she has a, a son called John. Joanne, John, right? And John happens to be also a doctor, with all love and respect to the doctors, the genuine ones. <laughs> so when I say, when I say, listen please, when I say Joanne, is John's mother. Am I saying she is only John's mother or is she also the doctor's mother? Now John is a doctor. I said Joanne is the mother of John. Is she now only the mother of John or is she also the mother of the doctor? Is she or not? When I say Joanne is the mother of this doctor, who is this doctor? John. So is she the mother of the doctor only or is she at the same time the mother of John? When you come, I will ask every church that say Mary is the mother of God. I'll ask you this question, my dear friend, and be honest with your answer. When, I, when you say Mary is the mother of God, who is God to you? They cannot go outside the circle of Christ. Because if they do, they're lying. So when I say to you, Mary, mother of God, who is God? He will say Christ. Okay. When you come to me and I say, Mary, mother of Christ, and you ask me who's Christ, I'll say God revealed in the flesh. So Mary, mother of Christ, who is Christ? God. Mary, mother of God, who is God? Christ. Joanne, mother of John. Who is John? Doctor. Joanne, mother of the doctor. Who is the doctor? John. They've been fighting over this for 1600. And you say Jewish, Jews are stubborn. Man, we surpass their stubbornness. 
ويش سبايس؟ حال Man, you should have gone and, and had a fish. Now, it's, we're fasting, but after fasting. You should have gone and had a fish bag and a chocolate sundae and enjoyed the day. What are you fighting for? And I'll say to that guy that, that I call him my son. He attacked me, but I'll call him my son. I don't have a problem with Mary being the mother of God. I don't have a problem. Okay, so I'm speaking in public now. All right? Not hiding. Mother of God, no worries, man, because God is to me and to you is Christ. So what's the problem, my dear friend? But then I'll, I'll sum it up with this. Now, why we give the Holy Mother the title of Christ? Like as if Christ is not good enough. Oh my goodness. Sick. All Catholics and all Orthodox and including the church I belong to, all of you, when you go to receive the body and the blood, what does the priest, the bishop, the cardinal, the pope say when he gives you the body and the blood? What does he say to you? The body of who? The blood of who? Why not God? Why not God? Since Mary is the mother of God, why not God? Why not Jesus? Isn't she the mother of Jesus? Why not Jesus? Theologically, neither of them are correct. You cannot say the body of God. You cannot say the body of Jesus. Theologically is incorrect. What is the perfect answer? Theologically, biblically, dogmatically, and canonically, the mother of Christ. This is the body and the blood of Christ. You know, the pandemic came and the so-called Corona, the biggest lie of all, and the so-called vaccines, sons of the snakes. And we're still fighting over how many natures, how many hypostases, and what is Mary to Jesus, God or Christ? Listen, can you wake up? Stop hurting the Lord Jesus. Can you instead stand up and face this evil and step on this evil, unite Christians, church leaders, unite against the tyranny of the 21st century, the evilness, the wickedness of this 21st century. Go and look for your lost children. Satan is devouring the flock and you are asleep because you've been chasing your thrones, your own glories. You have denied and sold your Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. You are worse than Judas Iscariot. Then shame on you. Shame. You're calling me a heretic? I, I have red belt in karate. You come here, I go Bruce Lee. Acha. And if you want me to be Ahmed, Allahu Akbar. <laughs> That's for you, Francois. My beloved, when are we going to be awakened? When? When? And if I was a heretic and the church I belong to was a heretic and Christ, Jesus wouldn't have come and, and embraced me. If I tell you what I've been through, literal hell. Like I don't talk because I just happen to have read the Holy Bible, which I have and I believe in every word, every word, both Old and New Testament, both. It's not because I'm dressed up in this outfit. No, no. I just, I don't just believe in Jesus. I know him. I know him. Everyone deserted me. Years back, everyone. From the closest to the furthest. I was left alone. I was left alone 
in a spiritual desert. It is a place where I pray nobody goes there. <laughs> because one second is unbearable. One second of it is unbearable. Listen, this spiritual desert, no theological school can give you and teach you. No theological school can prove to you that Jesus Christ is God and He does exist and He is here. Uh, when you live in that desert, it is then and then only Christ alone will come and say, I am the true living God. See before your very eyes and believe and know be, 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 without the slightest doubt, without the slightest doubt, no one can come and tell me Jesus does not exist. No one can come and tell me Jesus Christ is not God. No one. Because I lived with him. And I'm still living with him. And I'll say it always. For a Jewish man, the best looking ever. And all Jewish men should be proud that they have Jesus as the man. And he is God. This you will never understand until you go to that desert. Don't think church leaders by studying theology and receiving your doctorates, your PhDs, and you become theologians, you think now you know Jesus. You know nothing. In fact, your knowledge has destroyed the church because you've become boastful of what you have gained with knowledge. Satan devoured you and made you slaves to him. That's why you are silent, not standing against Satan and the evilness of the 21st century. In fact, supported this evil agenda and encouraged their flock to go and be jabbed with the poison of Rothschild. Someone like Bill Gates, who gives one penny about him? Someone like Klaus Schwab, who gives one penny about him? Sons of the snake, if they do not repent, and if we all do not repent, we'll have to answer to Jesus Christ. This is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you, Jesus, because no one will come to your rescue except him. This I came not only to believe in, I came to know because I've lived it all my life. I've lived it. And I honestly, 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 One beautiful Catholic man, he sent me a message, he said, Bishop, please, can you just say that Mary is the mother of God? Yes, she is the mother of God. Okay, you're happy? I'm happy. So can we move on and look after our children before Satan devours them? When are we going to unite? Until when are we going to act like little kids in the street so childishly until when until when wake up grow up be men for the lord jesus stand up with dignity with self-esteem with pride in your christ because he is my strength for when God is with me, who is against me? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. For he provides everything I lack. He is the fulfillment of everything I lack as a human. Christ, the love, the love of my life. He is my love. You know, I smell him, I pinch him, I eat him, I drink him, I squeeze him. I spoil him, I buy him whatever he wants.
I'm proud to say I am his donkey. You ride me wherever you wish, Lord. See, the issue is the Lord doesn't like limousines. Ferraris, Lamborghinis, Mercedes-Benz, no, no, not interested. He loves sitting on the back of a donkey. I said, Lord, you can never find a donkeyer one than me. I'm your donkey. Ride this donkey wherever you want to go. You want to take this donkey to hell? You're with me. I don't, give, I don't give one penny about hell. What matters is not the place, but the owner of the place is with me. Who cares about the place? Hell, kingdom, uh, paradise, uh, a cave in the desert, uh, a, a crown of glory, all the same. I don't care about going to heaven. I don't care about going to hell. I don't care about any place because my only care and concern is Jesus, the love of my life. As long as I'm with you, Lord, take me wherever you please and do as you please. And I'll leave you with this. You know, um, it's, a, it's a little story about the donkey. You know, on Palm Sunday, where the Lord Jesus sat on this donkey and he walked through you know, Jerusalem victorious, triumphant, the donkey looked multitudes of people on either side of the road, those who were carrying the olive branches and the palm branches and throwing their clothes on the road in front of the Lord Jesus. The donkey was saying, wow, what a turnout, brother. Not even Michael Jackson had this much turnout, like this donkey did. So he was saying, amazing. Look at all these people coming and greeting me. The following day, Monday, this donkey walked on the same street like he did yesterday with his friend, donkey. So he was talking to his friend. He was saying, man, I don't know what kind of a world is this. Yesterday, I had thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people greeting and cheering and saying hallelujah. And my ears were pointing upward, listening to their cheers. Today, I'm walking in the same street. Where are all the people? How come I'm just by myself and you? The other donkey said, you are really donkey. Listen, brother, the people that came out wasn't for you. It was for the king who was sitting on top of you. So us leaders, no matter how many people cheer, they are cheering for Christ, the king sitting on top of us, not for us. The cheering is not for me. It's for this sweetheart. So listen, leader. Come down from your high horse and sit on the floor. Have you ever heard anybody sitting on the floor and falling? Have you? No. Who falls? The one who jumps the ladder. The ones who wants to climb quickly and be seen by everyone. Stop climbing because it's dangerous. This elevation exaltation is only for God, not for you. If you climb up, you're going to fall and break yourself. Sit on the floor. Let God exalt you. Let God. Let God exalt you. So enough of these titles who are too big for us. One is called His grace. The other one is called His eminence. The other one is called His holiness. These names belong to Jesus. I'm a sinner. Call me a sinner. Call me a sinner because I am. Now you're talking the truth. We've pumped their heads. They became big balloons. They started flying too high. They forgot. They were once upon a time swimming in the pig's field in absolute sin. If it wasn't for Jesus Christ of Nazareth, all glory to his holy name, I would have still been a sinner in the street. 
He cleansed me. He washed me clean with His blood. He gave me His righteous clothing. He gave me the ring, authority of being the Son of God. He gave me new shoes, a new life, a new behavior, a new attitude, a new a language, a new tongue, a new heart. Everything He renewed in me. And He made me sit in His glory. I should never forget that I was in the pig's field. I should always remind myself of it. No matter how much lo the Lord exalts me, I will always say, I am a sinner, Lord. Have mercy on me, I the sinner. Read the church fathers, the church fathers of the Catholic Church, of the Orthodoxy world. Read the church fathers. They used to raise the dead, but when they spoke about themselves, they said, Lord, I am the greatest sinners of all. Have mercy on me, I the sinner. This sinner was raising the dead. And today, we're calling church leaders holiness. And this holiness is killing those who are living. But those sinners raise the dead. And today, church leaders, those who are living, they are burying them underground because they loved themselves more than their Lord. I'm a man, I am a male. My rainbow is seven colors, not six. And I thank God, Yahweh, the Elohim, Elohim. I thank Him for giving me this identity. This identity, no power can wipe. What God gives, no one can take. And what God takes, no one can bring back. Amen. God protect all. Doesn't matter. You only, I only live once. All of us live once. Doesn't matter. I, li I live today. I die tomorrow. Doesn't matter. I wish. I wish I go today before tomorrow. I want to be with my sweetheart. What am I going to do with this piece of filth called the world? I leave this piece of filth to Satan. He can eat it, but he can't because he's spirit. <laughs> he can't do nothing with the tangible world. So what he does, he tempts people with this tangible world. He can't have it. He is spirit. What is he going to do with material? Spirit can't do nothing with material. So he's using material to tempt us, to make us fall and end up in hell instead of heaven. Step on Satan, step on the temptations, step on this world, step on Hollywood, step on everything that is evil. My sons and daughters, do not listen to this kind of filth that comes out of Hollywood. Leave that filth to the Illuminati's. We belong to Jesus Christ. Jab yourself, you're showing an act of love for your neighbor. Oh, what a feeling, Corona. You know what was funny? I used to get sick with a seasonal flu every year without fail. Throughout Corona, or a, 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 the pandemic. Two and a half years, people coughing in my face. They said, oh, you can't see people, social distancing. Anthony Fauci, another big liar. <laughs> Um, you, you, social distancing, no good. You got to put the mask on. I never put a mask on. I, I, it's recorded, right? I never put a mask on. I never social. I hugged them. I embraced them. I kissed them, and they were ah oh, 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 oh. And I said ah oh, ah oh, ah oh, oh, to you too. Thank you very much. They kissed. The, they kissed the cross, and I and I licked the cross. All the germs in my mouth. Huh? People came. They were in the church coughing, coughing. They drank from the cup that carries the blood of the Lamb of God in the truth. And I licked that cup. I licked it all. I never, ever got sick throughout the pandemic. Never.
because I was on the antidote called the blood of Christ. The best vaccine, exactly. You want to be vaccinated? Go to Jesus Christ. I was, I'm tempted to tell you this joke. Can I? I said it yesterday. It's kind of a naughty joke, but please may the Lord forgive me and you forgive me as well. Okay, very quickly. This... Uh, <laughs> This mother, this mother went to her son, little boy. She said, son, do you know Newton? Like Isaac Newton, you know, the genius. She said, do you know Newton? He said, no, mom, who, who is he? She said, well, if you've been paying attention to your uh, assignments and your homeworks, you would have known Newton by now. And the boy turned to his mom. And he said, Mom, do you know Rachel? <laughs> she said, no. He said, Mom, if you were paying attention to on my dad, you would have known who Rachel is. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know, we laughed. But what has been happening in the world is nothing short of a laughable matter. What has been happening in the world is nothing short of a laughable matter. Because what is a laughable matter when an adult mature person acts and behaves like a little kid? Now that is a laughable matter. Adults in the secular world, adults in the religious sector acting like little kids laughable matter but very sad let's bow our heads my beloved in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit one god amen our good god and full of mercy our good god and full of mercy whose grace and mercy is poured upon all Pour, my Lord, the compassion of the delightfulness of your love upon your servants and again transform them in the hope of renewal to the life of repentance. Renew in them your Holy Spirit by whom they are sealed for the day of salvation. Purify them by your compassion from all flesh and spiritual blemishes and assure the hope of their faith by the aid of your grace and instill the walks of their behavior in the paths of righteousness. Please them along with the saints in your kingdom by the assurance of the hope of their faith and the adoption as your children and in the joy of your absolving mysteries. Empower them by the aid of your mercies to observe your commandments and fulfill your will, to confess, worship, and praise your holy name, the Lord of all, Father and Son, and Holy Spirit forever. Amen.